This is a follow-up for a case I posted recently. It's been about three months since the surgery. Stick around. I'm Bill Nudera. Welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. Just a quick recap here. Tooth number nine, upper right number one, was diagnosed with necrotic pulp and chronic apical periodontitis. The root canal treatment was completed in a single visit with no complications or issues. At the four-week tissue check, the patient returned to the office and I saw no resolution to those apical sinus tracts. So we had to make a decision because the patient was leaving out of town for three months in about two weeks. We opted to perform surgical root canal treatment and resected a little bit more of the root than I wanted to based on some root defects that I noticed during the surgical process. When the patient returned about 10 days later for the suture removal, I had some concerns. I saw a little white spot developing apical to the surgical area, and I noticed some significant recession. I put a link to the full case video down below. So if you haven't seen it yet, or you're interested in understanding a little bit more of the challenges that I had during this process and the decision making that was done, I encourage you to go ahead and watch that video. This is what it looks like three months later. I took a PA, the periapical image looks good. I don't see any signs of pathology or breakdown to my graft. The tissue also looks good from an infection standpoint. There's no palpation sensitivity. There's no percussion sensitivity. There's no bite sensitivity. The patient is completely symptom free. That little white spot that I was concerned with really ended up being nothing. So I really think we're safe in that regards. However, that gingival recession is unlikely going to resolve. While this patient was gone for three months, I was thinking about what our realistic options would be if I saw something like this at that three month mark. And realistically, there's only a couple of things that we could consider. Number one, we can consider doing some sort of coronal repositioning of that tissue. Although I'm not so sure that the result is going to be favorable because there's just no bone support underneath there. So I think that comes with high risk and with minimal gain. The other option I thought of was actually considering replacing the entire restoration. If we look at the gingival architecture here of what we end up with, it really does match the contralateral side. And there's a step in the restorative incisal edge anyway, and in order to correct both the step and the gingival recession, replacement of that restoration from an aesthetic standpoint would solve the problem. The patient asked me if they had to do anything. And from a health standpoint and an infective standpoint, the answer is no. This is an aesthetic concern at this point in time. The patient looked at me and said, I'm 80 years old. At this point in time, I don't really care about aesthetics. I more or less don't want to lose the tooth. And I said, okay, then we do nothing. And it's okay to do nothing as long as the patient is okay with the final outcome. So it's going to be about six months before I see this patient again for any further follow-ups. And I'm not really anticipating this situation to change all that much. And if something does change, I'll be sure to update this video and make sure that we see what it looks like. But at this point in time, I think what we're dealing with here, what we're seeing here is going to be close to what that final result is going to look like. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this follow-up from this procedure that I posted a few months ago, and it really gives us an idea of some of the longer-term follow-ups here. If you haven't already, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you get updated every time I post a new video. I'm Bill Nudera. Thanks for watching.